Hey traders, welcome to another video on my YouTube channel Equities. And today's video is part two in the financial statements series. Today we will learn about income statements. Quick note after we are done with the financial statements, we still have maybe another. Uh, two or three videos after this we have we still have the balance sheet the cash flow statement and a couple of other statements the next topic is going to be the financial ratios which is a part of the financial statements analysis so we are going to do this after we're done with the financial statements so please subscribe to my channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded i have included my contact details here on the first slide if anyone would like to connect with me or send me any questions i'll do my best to answer as many questions as possible first let me get the legal stuff out of the way please make sure to read the disclaimer before proceeding in brief I'm not a financial advisor. These videos represent my own understanding and opinion about the topics presented. These are not recommendations of any sort. All the information and the data presented are from sources believed to be accurate, but accuracy is not guaranteed. Okay, so with this out of the way, let's get started. We saw this agenda before in the first video in, in, in financial statements um, part one where we finished the introduction number one. So we will continue from where we left. We are done with the introduction as I said. So the next is income statement and other comprehensive income. Okay, so for today's video the first thing we are going to do, we are going to go uh, over accounting standards again, just to remind you. And then we will see what do we mean by income statements. Why do we need income statements? And instead of spending like 30 minutes on a video, just uh, giving you some information, I thought that it would be more beneficial more useful if we could actually look at actual statements i mentioned this in part one so as i promised we are going to look at apple income statement and we'll see what we have there and as usual i'm going to end my video with the closing notes okay so this is we saw this slide in part one so let me quickly just review it. Uh, I'm going to uh, explain to you what do we mean by accounting standards. Accounting standards are a set of guidelines and rules that companies must follow when they are pre preparing their financial statements. Company follow the standard principles and procedures that define the basis of financial accounting policies and practices. The purpose of having accounting standards is to ensure that financial statements from multiple companies are comparable because all the companies will follow the same set of rules. There are differences between GAAP and IFRS that I mentioned in part one, but generally speaking, because there is a set of rules that comp companies follow we could compare their financial statements accounting standards because there are accounting standards the financial statements are more credible and allow for more economic decisions based on accurate and more importantly consistent information in part one we mentioned that there are many differences between GAAP 
and IFRS or else we will just have one accounting standard and the the difference that we discussed was the treatment of inventory how the cost is calculated today we are going to have another difference between IFRS and GAAP and that is there is a category of extraordinary items that are prohibited from being included in the income statement when it's prepared under IFRS. What I mean by uh, extraordinary items, it's exceptional in nature or in size or it's an event that we don't expect that it's going to happen again. GAP allows this line item to be to be stated in the in the income statement the point is that if you have something that not usual and you included it in the income statement either as a deduction or an addition this line item will affect the net income we are going to see that in the income statement we have something called net income so if you include something that is not usual it's extraordinary you don't expect to see the same line next year this will affect the sustainability the reliability and the consistency of net income so when you're trying to forecast the net income of a certain company you have to exclude the unusual items because you don't expect this to happen again in the future okay again I'm not going to go over all the differences as I said in part one uh, it's it's a, it's a huge subject but the purpose of these videos of the videos on my channel about the stocks options uh, I'm going to up upload the video uh, introduction about technical analysis and then candlestick charts the purpose is to help you become a better trader to start understanding the basics and then we are moving on step by step as you can see when discussing financial statement my goal is not to help you become an accountant but to be able to read the financial statements and to do some comparison to do some analysis to be able to take a better decision okay now I have a quick note to mention in the in the sub agenda for today's video I said that we are going to cover the income statement and other comprehensive income both together are called comprehensive income statement the statement of comprehensive income it could be presented in a, in a, in a single statement it doesn't always have to be separated into an income statement and other comprehensive uh, income statement and then at the end you would find a line which says comprehensive income it could be uh, done in a single statement or in two separate statements as we are going to see to see today uh, when we look at Apple's income statement in case of two separate statement you will find a separate statement for the income statement then in the statement of comprehensive income the first line is going to be the net income which we get from the income statement then followed by the other comprehensive income entries or, or uh, lines and then the last would be the total comprehensive income okay just so you know what we will be looking at okay perfect so first question what do we mean by income statement the income statement is also known as the profit and loss statement p and l for short <coughs> and the income statement is also known as the statement of income or statement of operations uh, apple calls it statement of operations as we are going to see in the income statement we are going to see revenues and we are going to see expenses if you deduct expenses from the revenues 
you'll get the net income. So now the question is, why do we need income statement? Of course, to, to know what's the net income, but why? Because it makes it easier for investors to analyze and evaluate a company's profitability. And also, they can forecast future periods. The income statement that we are looking to look at for Apple, we will find the figures from three years. So, by doing some analysis, you could have an expectation about, for example, Apple's revenue, Apple's income next year and the year after. In the income statement, you will, you will always find two parts or two categories, operating income and then non-operating income. Operating income is simply income that's generated from the company's core business. Non-operating activities or income is from other sources of income, like for example, interest income or uh, sales of some uh, securities that we are going to see shortly. But this is not the core of the business. Of course, strong growing operating income is a positive sign of a healthy business. If you see that net income is increasing, you should go back to the income statement and look for the sources of this income. If it was not operating income, then you shouldn't be excited because maybe the cause of the increase in income, which is non-operating, is not sustainable. Correct? And finally, when looking at income statement, you could tell is this company making money or not. Profitability is the main purpose why we have income statement. The next statement is other comprehensive income statement. As the title says, it's other income. So this is typic typically not related to the company's core business, but it's an income or unrealized gains or losses from infrequently businesses. Something that we don't expect it would happen every year. Other comprehensive income statement can also be seen as a more expansive view of net income. It includes everything. Like for example, foreign currencies transactions, if it's gains or losses, it's a line item in the other comprehensive income. You will not find this in the income statement. Although the, maybe the company has generated income by some foreign currencies transactions, but this is not part of its core business. So this is stated in the other comprehensive income statement. Having a separate statement for non-recurring items or unusual items or unfrequent items, it's, it improves the reliability and effectiveness when analyzing a company's income because you could tell that this part of the income is the core business this part of the income it's um, investment in securities this part of the income it's other comprehensive income so you could evaluate how efficient net income is other comprehensive income also shows how the firm's investment portfolio is performing by revealing its unrealized gains and losses. The next slide will explain exactly what I mean by this. So, we may say that comprehensive income, not other comprehensive, the comprehensive income, is the sum of the company's regular income and other income. Okay? Remember this. Comprehensive income 
is the net income that you get from the income statement plus the other income that's found as line items in the other comprehensive income the sum is the comprehensive income okay so far we will go over apple's income statement so we apply everything that we learn but first but first let me draw your attention to the fact of how some line items are classified and hence will be included in the income statement or the other comprehensive income because this is again important this is affects the reliability and the sustainability of the net income figure and also note that uh, the 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 next slide we are going to look at this is the the there was a modification uh, which is uh, IFRS 9 uh, for example the AFS the available for sale is not available anymore but the point of from this slide that I'm going to show you now is to show you the way the companies decide on how to treat different investments affect the net income statement if it includes it in the income statement it will affect net income if it includes it in other comprehensive income it will not affect net income so the net income figure would be more reliable but it will have an effect on the other comprehensive income this is this is pure accounting I don't want to get into this because this is not the scope of my videos again as as a reminder the 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 purpose of my channel is to make you a better trader not an accountant so uh, just so you know the the coming slide is prior to IFRS 9 and now it's a uh, it's a bit different okay we have three classifications of security this is one this is two and this is three the first one is securities held to maturity the company owns securities and these securities will be held to maturity these marketable securities could be debt or equity instruments and and held to maturity securities are typically reported as a non-current asset in the balance sheet don't bother about this line i just thought of mentioning but we are going to see everything about balance sheets in part three of this video series. Interest income, this will be presented in the income statement. Okay? So the first one held to maturity, it affects the balance sheet. This is an asset, so it, it has an effect on the balance sheet. And the interest, the revenue that you get from these securities which will be held to maturity will be included as a line item in the income statement okay what's next <clears throat> held for trading the first one was held to maturity the second one held to trading so these are securities that again the company owns but the purpose of owning them is trading to make a quick profit out of them to be bought and sold in the short term and also these securities could be either debt or equity this will be a line item of unrealized gains or losses and are recorded in the income statement okay the third one that we have is available for sale this is like it combines both categories it includes debt and equity securities as as well that the company plans on holding here this is a better color just to see that the company plans on holding for a while but they could also sell it if there is an opportunity they're not going to keep it they are going to sell it the changes 
in the value of available for sale these are recorded as unrealized gain or loss in other comprehensive income so this OCI this income state clear so now let's take a look at an actual income statement and review everything that we said this is apple don't worry about the word consolidated this means that this income statement includes apples and all of its subsidiaries and as i said they don't call it income statement they call it statement of operations which is the same thing when you look at any financial statement first thing that you need to notice how the years are presented here it's from right to left it's this way it could be the other way but it's important this is the first thing that you look at the second thing that you look at is to see the units that the company is using here it says in millions except number of shares which are in thousands so this is times 1 million okay so this is like 220.7 billion and so on the first part you would find the revenue the sales and apple has two sources of revenue from its products and from services we know that apple sells iphone macbook ipad and so on and they sell services um, maintenance for the products uh, support for the products the cloud storage and and so on so these are the revenue the sum of these two items will give us the total sales and you could compare from year to year you could get some information <clears throat> the first thing that we would notice is from 2018 to 2019 it dropped from 225 to 213 that's 10 it's maybe 5 percent and then from 2019 to 2020 it went up about 7 uh, billion 7 it's like 3.5 percent when you're looking at statements like this start taking notes about questions that are going to come from the figures the first thing that you might be interested in knowing why there was a drop between 2018 and 2019 and why there was an increase maybe apple introduced a new product maybe the the drop between 2018 to 2019 um, the iphone sales dropped but if you looked at the services the services increased dramatically like here it's uh from 40 let's say 40 to 46 6 it's like 15 percent and from 46 to 53 7 it's like another i don't know maybe 14 15 percent again what's the reason and is this increase sustainable or it was there was a reason behind this increase and then this is the final this is the final revenue before i move on i want to mention something about how the financial statements are presented there is another way of presenting financial statements not just the the income statement all the financial statements and it's what's called a common size presentation so a common size income statement is an income statement in which each line item is expressed as a percentage of the revenue 
this one. This would present 100%. This would present 100%. And this would present 100%. This is uh, sometimes called uh, vertical analysis. So if this represents 100%, I shouldn't be pointing at 2018, let's look at 2020. This is 2020. If this represents 100%, let's see what's the cost of goods sold as a percentage of the total net sales. We have 274 billion. The total cost is 169559. So we just divide this by this as the the hundred percent. So this represents uh, about sixty two percent. So Apple cost of goods sold, cost of sales is sixty two percent. So this should be thirty eight percent. So it's gross profit is 104.9 billion and this 38 percent is the gross profit margin you remember this term i introduced this uh, in in part one of course you can do the same for 2018 2019 i just don't don't want to waste time and thus you can do it on your own actually it's a good practice to open companies that you are interested in. Just look at the income statement, the basic figures, and do this kind of calculations. You'll start visualizing things that you didn't see before. Apple services sales is increasing. It's increasing from 40 to 46, this is 15%. This is not 1% or 2% increase. And the same for between 2019 and 2020, so it's not steady, but I would say there is a 15% and 15% in 2021. Do we expect to see another 15% or we're not going to? The products sales is not increasing. As we can see in 2018, it went down in 2019 and then it went up. What about 2021? Maybe if you could look at the income statement on the quarterly uh, filing, the, the, the quarterly statements, you would see the composition of these numbers. Maybe you could get better idea about what was the reason of the increase, what was the reason of the drop. Okay? So we have a gross margin. Again, the gross margin, more or less, it's <clears throat> there's a drop about 2% and then an increase of maybe 6%. So far, we are in Apple's core business. You see, all this part, I'm not sure if it's visible or not, all this is related to Apple's core business. So, we had the sales of the products and we have cost of 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 the the products the cost of goods sold but we also we still have other expenses that should be deducted from the gross profit like the salaries like the uh, the the research and development this is the line item operating expenses which is the r and d and sgna and this equals 38 billion. We had a gross profit of 104.5 billion, 104.9 billion, sorry. And we have 38.7 billion <coughs> operating expenses. If you deduct this from that minus, you would get what's called operating income income from operations this is the income from apple's core business this line 
and this is very important because you could see you could look at <clears throat> very fancy income statements with huge net income but the operating income is not impressive the profit margin is not impressive you understand what what i'm trying to to point out to here <clears throat> this is what you care about the operating income this is the income generated from the core business and then we have other income or expenses this is the net so here you could find interest income interest expense <clears throat> depreciation and so on so this is the net of all this it's 803 million remember that the units are in millions <clears throat> And then you have income before tax. You deduct the tax and you get the net income. Very good. Now what? Does Apple have any other income that it didn't mention here? Of course it does. Okay, let's look at other comprehensive income statement. Again, consolidated. It means that apples plus its subsidiaries and other businesses first thing that you would notice here is that we started the other comprehensive income with net income you see and then we have some other comprehensive income items and this is what we are trying to reach total comprehensive income okay so what do we expect to see in other comprehensive income or loss? We said in the beginning of the video that foreign currency transactions, this could be an item here. Apple had 88 million plus between brackets. It's a minus without brackets. It's a plus. So this is plus minus minus. And you remember when we mentioned about classification of securities that a company has we said that let me open the slide again we said that available for sale securities unrealized gain here unrealized gains or losses are a line item in the OCI the other comprehensive income here derivative this is an instrument that its price is derived from something else. I, I explained this in the options videos, by the way, but just to know a derivative instrument, it's a trading instrument whose price is derived from something called the underlying. Okay, so these derivatives are available for sale change in fair value in the last uh, comprehensive income or other comprehensive income it had a value these securities were reported and today there is an increase of 79 million okay some adjustments to the net gains or losses then another line this is also available for sale marked debt securities it's securities that Apple is holding and it's available for sale. It could sell sell them anytime. It could hold it, but it could sell them anytime. And then the sum here and the sum here. And then you add all this together here. This part. Sorry, and, and this part as well. And this what you get. Total comprehensive income. So Apple's total comprehensive income all the income that Apple received from everything that it's doing, everything, its core business, its the, the, the market securities, the, the, the um, uh, securities held to maturity, everything. It made 57.5 billion. 56.5, 58, 57.5. This is like a steady figure 
throughout the year. Although if you remember that we said that the sales between 2018 and 2019 it dropped, correct? But let me bring this slide back again. From 225 to 213, there was an increase in the services. And here there was an increase as well. It's about less than 2%. When you open financial statements in general, it's very important that you try to analyze the figures or else why are, are you opening just to see how much Apple is making? It doesn't worth anything. If you know that Apple is selling for 100 billion or 10 billion, the figure on its own doesn't mean anything. The comparison, this is the most important thing. And for companies that file for its quarterly uh, statements on a regular basis, because as we said, <clears throat> the companies are obliged to submit the statements at least annually. But of course, for big companies like Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, and all, all the big uh, companies, they report quarterly. So it's very important that you look at this figure in 2019, for instance, and you see the breakdown. <clears throat> if you open the, the four quarter defiling of Apple in 2019, they should sum up to this amount. And you could analyze it quarter by quarter. Okay? Again, it's, there is no rocket, rocket science in here. <clears throat> After we finish the, the financial statements, we are going to look at how to do some analysis. We are going to go over um, a lot of financial ratios, uh, how to <clears throat> compute, how to value profitability, the, the company's solvency, the turnover of its inventory, and a lot, lot of uh, financial ratios. <clears throat> the point is, when you do this kind of analysis, you should start to create an opinion about the company. This is the point of <clears throat> analyzing financial statements. You want to take an investing, investing decision. Correct? And a quick reminder, all these figures are history. This is 2020. You see? All, everything that you see in financial statements <clears throat> are already reflected in the prices. Your job is to analyze these figures and you, you try to come up with <clears throat> some, some kind of forecast. If we say that this is 56.5, this is 58, this is 57.5, so <clears throat> next year it's fair to say that the total Apple's total comprehensive income is going to be between, let's say, 56 and 58.5. Something like that. You understand what I'm trying to say here? <clears throat> this is the point of looking at financial statements in general. Okay? Next video, we are going to discuss <clears throat> balance sheets in part 3, and then in part 4, the cash flow statement, and in part 5, or the last video of the financial statements um, um, series or parts, uh, I'll try to include <clears throat> the last three statements that we are going to look at, the financial notes, the MD&A and the statement of changes in owner's equity. Okay. Finally, the closing notes. So where do we go from here? Now, as you can see that Apple's shareholders, they have a very nice fat income. How do they get it? <clears throat> do they get all of it or part of it? This, this is what's called retained earnings. This we are going to see when we start discussing uh, balance sheets. We will understand assets, liabilities, and equities. Equities, it's what the shareholders own in the company. And this amount increase, it increases by what's called the retained earnings. Okay, 
We still have a lot of questions about financial statements. I'm just taking it step by step. And as I said in the beginning, this is going to be a long journey. Um, I'll do my best to get to, to get you answers to all the questions uh, that you might have on my next video about financial statements part 3 <clears throat> when we discuss balance sheets. Finally, as I always say at the end of my videos, let's all trade like a pro. Thank you everyone, good luck and have a great day.